Hello, Syngap Land. My name is Michael Gralia. Today is Friday, August 13th, and this is episode 222 of Syngap 10, your 10-minute weekly update on all things Syngap. Now, for the first time in 22 episodes, I missed last week because I was coming back from vacation with a Syngapian, which is not to be underestimated. And I'm sorry for that, but I'm back. Episode 22. Lot to cover. 10 minutes. Might pull it off. Might not. Here we go. Webinars, mugs, blogs, GC, Citizen, Cure, Once Upon a Gene, CTR. I want to talk to you about everything. Let's get through it. Webinars. If you are a family, there's two webinars coming up. If, you, if you're not a family, if you're interested in Syngap, if you're a scientist, if you're a researcher, if you're a postdoc, whatever you are, these two webinars are going to be exceptional. So August 19th, next week, is going to, on Thursday at 10 Pacific, at Thursday at 10 Pacific, Eduardo is speak, Dr. Eduardo Perez is speaking about interpreting Syngap 1 variants. It, uh, we get a lot of parents asking questions about what does this variant mean? What does that mean? What does this word mean? How do people do this work? Eduardo's the man. He already gave this talk at our Spanish round table. It was a huge hit and we were like, you have to do this in English and he was happy to do it. He's, he's a very, very, very cool uh, genetics researcher. He was in Dr. Lal's group. He was part of that paper that came up with the um, predicted incidence of six per 100,000. Just an exceptional, kind, and brilliant man. This is not to be missed. August 19th, 10 Pacific. And next month, September 2nd, also at 10 Pacific, Dr. Ana Minorance will be giving a talk about the future of therapies for genetic epilepsy, specifically Syngap-1. Um, again, she is truly exceptional. She's a... Um, a PhD in neuroscience, but she's a consultant to different pharmaceutical companies. She knows the space really well. She's been an advisor and a friend to us for years. We're so grateful that she's giving a webinar. These two webinars are going to be so good. So, so good. They're going to be in English. Both speakers are Spanish, but they're going to be in English, which is great because I don't understand what they're saying. But please come. And uh, Dr. Angel Aledo tweeted out today by the way he was very happy he got a Syngap mug we are the secrets out we're now sending mugs to everyone who does a webinar so if you're a scientist out there and you haven't done a webinar yet you want to you want a cool mug this is your chance these mugs look like this wait a second they have they have our logo on the back i think they now have the newer logo and on the other side they say eat sleep cure Syngap one because that's what we're all about eat sleep cure Syngap one that's what we do here so you're going to get a mug webinar givers um, so Dr. Anna and Dr. Eduardo are going to get mugs. Uh, the links are in the show notes, syngap.fun slash Eduardo and syngap.fun slash Anna with one end to sign up. Please come to those webinars. They're going to be, they're going to be something else. And if you're not a Syngap family, you're watching from some other rare disease group, watch them anyway. Th these two really are top shelf. Um, speaking of top shelf, We've, we put out some really great stuff on our blog. If you're a family or just another rare disease with a neurohaploid insufficiency, make sure you're tracking our blog. But this most recent blog article was a lot of work. It involved um, guidance from members of our SAB and our, our, one of our parent geneticists was involved and, and, and I spent a lot of time on it. And it's an answer to a question I got. One of the parents said to me, you know, Mike, we've been diagnosed, we've looked at our report, we've talked to you guys, now I've got a point with a geneticist, I don't even know what to talk to them about. And I was like, it's actually a really good question. I'm not sure what you're talking about. So I asked a couple of geneticists. I'm like, what should they talk to you about? And this blog is the answer to that, right? It is a it is a blow by blow of how to take advantage of that really precious face to face time with a geneticist or a genetic counselor after you've gotten a Syngap one diagnosis. And don't underestimate the value of that. There are things you can learn and things you can hear from them. And then also you got to remember these meetings are a two way street. Right. Every time we walk into one of these appointments, we are getting care, we're getting education, we're making sure we're doing the best thing for our loved ones, and we're informing the clinician about Syngap-1, about the reality of this disease. Because they're ahead of us on the science, we're ahead of us, them on the real life and the implications and the complexity and blah, 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 blah. So take these meetings seriously. If you have an appointment with a GC or a geneticist, please go ahead and read that blog. It's our most recent blog, links in the show notes. It's really good. Um, which brings me to genetic counselors. One of the things I'm working on right now, and if you're a genetic counselor and you want to talk to me about this, please reach out. If you've got a genetic counselor that you love, let me know. I'd love to talk to them. We're talking to a couple of uh, some of the best genetic counselor training programs in the nation about making sure that they know about Syngap-1 and thinking about like, could their students maybe do projects on Syngap-1? Because if you think about it, 808 diagnoses of the last quarter, six per 100,000 predicted incidents. There's a lot of Syngapians out there who aren't getting diagnosed. Some of them aren't getting diagnosed because they aren't getting testing, because stupid insurance rules, because, pe because people are missing obstinate seizures, lots of reasons. But some of them aren't getting diagnosed because there isn't a genetic counselor. The genetic counselor is not 
um, aware of, of all the things they need to be aware of with Syngap 1. So we're trying to nip that one in the bud a little bit, and we're working with two, two of the absolute best programs in the country. It's all early stages, so I'm not going to name names. But I want to hear from you, parents and genetic counselors, w what has been your experience with Syngap 1, and, and what do you think we should be talking to genetic counseling students about? It's kind of a cool project. Um, and if you do have a genetic counselor, by the way, count yourself lucky. These people are hard to come by and they're gold because they understand all the deep science and they can hang out with the geneticists and the neurologists and, you know, that, that's, that's not easy. And they get to deal with parents at all levels and asking all kinds of questions and then they do that translation. I, I personally um, have had Ellie Brimble uh, as my genetic counselor at Stanford. She has since left and joined Citizen where she's the head of neuroscience, science, or clinical ops. Her title changes all the time. Anyway. My message here is if you're a genetic counselor or a family and you want to talk about what genetic counselors should know, let me know. And if you do have a genetic counselor, go go hug a genetic counselor today. These people are gold and they're so important for the quality of care that our kids receive. Moving right along, citizen update. Citizen is our natural history study. It is best in class. Two things I want you to know. 110 people in the U.S. have signed up and are confirmed. Confirmed means they have a pathogenic or likely pathogenic diagnosis as opposed to a VUS or a benign a whole separate conversation, um, which means we have 110 spots taken. We have 12 people who are um, onboarded or international. There's another 12 spots gone, like the sound effects. So we're at 122 people signed up in Citizen. That I think that makes us the largest rare disease cohort in Citizen. I'll let someone else confirm that, but I'm pretty sure. That means there's 28 spots left. There's 28 spots left in our current slot allocation for you to sign up. You as a family get all your data in one place. You get the summary dashboard. Um, you get the ability to, to share your medical records at will with whomever you want to, other clinicians, family, etc. And, by the way, we are able, on the back end, in partnership with Citizen, to de-identify that data, standardize and normalize it, share it with researchers, and make sure it's available for papers. And if you think about it, this makes it so much easier for researchers to study our disease compared to other diseases. And then, of course, companies can license it, and we want them to license it because it's going to save them time as they develop therapies for our kids. The sooner they get it done, the sooner our kids feel better. The sooner they get it done, the sooner our kids feel better. By the way, did I mention it's base? It's free. It's not totally free. We pay, we SRF pay for um, some fees to citizen, but we're happy to pay those fees. So you as a family, if you have a pathogenic or likely pathogenic diagnosis, citizen takes you 10 minutes to sign up, 10 minutes to sign up, and all these good things happen. Sign up, people. Sign up, citizen.com slash Singap1. Citizen has two eyes. We just did a panel discussion yesterday on Facebook Live. Um, about this. If you want to hear that discussion, I'll, I'll put the link in the show notes, but make sure you sign up. Citizen.com slash Syngap1. There's 28 spots left. It's really valuable. I want to talk about Cure. Last week, I talked about Cure. Back in episode 19, I got a little passionate about Cure at the end there. Episode 19 was good. By the way, so was episode 21. I always listen to last week's episode to make sure I don't repeat myself too much. Last week was good. If you didn't listen to it, make sure you listen to it. My hair is a bit of a mess, but aside from that, it's a very good episode. Um, but in episode 19, I got passionate about Cure, and then recently Rarebase, who's um, a group we're going to be working with, put out an article about Cure and why it's important to say Cure and the power of reaching for a Cure. And they basically said what I said back in episode 19, but they were way more articulate. It's a very good article. So I'm going to put that in the show notes. Please read it. Again, to those parents and families who looked me in the eye a couple weeks ago and said, what do you mean by Cure? Are, we, are our kids going to get better? I want to repeat myself here because it's important. Our kids suffer from a catastrophic collection of afflictions, seizures, sleep, behaviors, hypotonia. I, I lose track of these things. Uh, gastrointestinal issues, feeding issues. It's endless. And you add all those things up and all those specialists and all those drugs and all those side effects, and it becomes incredibly overwhelming for families. Okay? Addressing each of those individually, which is what we're doing right now, is too much work, inefficient, and has a lot of unintended consequences. The way we get our kids better is we get a drug into their brains that makes more Syngap. There's two ways to make more Syngap. You can fix the bad copy or you can make the good copy work harder. We all have different typos in our different bad copies. So that's gonna be complicated and expensive, much more efficient to go and make the good copy work harder. This gets us into an ASO versus AAV conversation, which I'd love to have another time. We all are working for, SRF is funding, the money you raise goes towards finding therapies that will make the good copy work harder. All right? That's what I mean by cure. 
oh, but my kid's six, seven, 10, 45, 25, 65, whatever, five. Isn't it too late? No, it's not too late. We know that the gap gets bigger over time. We know that the gap gets bigger over time. Why does the gap get bigger over time? Because you need sing gap every single day. So my son is seven, your kid is 13, your kid is 25, whatever. The sooner we can get a drug into that brain and we can increase the amount of Syngap, it's, it's fair to assume symptoms will reduce. Will they become neurotypical and suddenly start going to college? Probably not. Will they feel better? Will they sleep better? Will they have less seizures? Could they start talking? Yes. We have to reach for a cure, people. We have to say cure. We have to believe cure. We have to accept that we're not exactly sure what cure means, but it's the only thing that makes any sense to work towards. And if we're not working towards it, what are you doing? Don't give up hope. After that lies despair, and that's not okay. Believe in a cure, work for a cure, fundraise for a cure, believe that cure is possible. I want to talk about two more things. I'm over time, but it is what it is. I skipped last week, you just get like bonus minutes. If you're another rare disease person or you know somebody in another rare disease group and they're like, yeah, I want to talk to Mike about... Nasha, one of my, one of my dear friends and, and mentors in the Fox G1 community, um, and I get a lot of phone calls from people starting other rare disease groups and they want to ask me questions and how do you do this and how do you do that? And Nasha and I were joking one day, we're like, we have this meeting like every two weeks. I'm not exaggerating. Like there's rare disease groups popping up right and left and Nasha and I are like taking calls from people and I, I always take those calls not because I have time, but because I was there and, and I wish to God I had called more people. Called a lot of people, to be honest with you, but I should have called more. Um, and so Nash and I were like, let's just do a podcast. So we called Effie. Effie is like the queen of podcasting in rare disease, once upon a gene. If you remember way back when, episode 41, links in the show notes, Effie interviewed me on Once Upon a Gene. I was, I was, I was so thrilled. I was starstruck. But now, episode 94, which came out a couple weeks ago, Effie is in, interviewing me and Nasha. And, and for those of you who have heard me talk about Nasha, once you listen to this podcast, you'll understand why Nasha is so impressive. But this is a podcast where Nasha and I are saying, if you're starting a rare disease group, these are the things you should think about. And so if you're another rare disease family out there and you want to know how I, what I think you should do to start a rare disease group, this is the podcast to listen to. But if you're a Syngap family, the reason I'm talking about this, because this podcast, Syngap 10, is for you. I want you to listen to it just because you will hear me and Nasha saying the same thing, chapter and verse, about what to do and why to do it. And that might help frame up and understand this effort that is the Syngap Research Fund. Okay, so if you have a chance, it's, a, it's really high quality. Effie is, Effie is the best. And, and you'll get to hear Effie interviewing me and Nasha talking about rare disease. I'm going to sneeze. Check it out. Last thing, back to cures. Cures go through clinical trials. Whatever the cure will be, it's going to have to go through a clinical trial. Are we ready for clinical trials? No. That's why we have a clinical trial readiness grant, $300,000 to Harvard to analyze the citizen data and do some EEG collection and analyze the EEGs and hopefully find as an EEG biomarker. This work is not free. You can't get the best people in the world to work on your stuff and say, please do it out of the goodness of your heart. Because guess what? They've got mortgages, families, and kids too. We got to pay people, folks. So we need to raise money. CTR, syngap.fund slash CTR. We've raised $36,000 so far, which means we only need $266,000 more. Get to work. Get to work. I have good news coming on this. We're going to probably have a couple of, of good sized donations coming here, but it's not enough to cover the whole thing. So please, every dollar counts, whether you can raise $100, whether you can raise $10,000. Let's get to work, people. Syngap.fund slash CTR. Every single penny goes directly to research. Thank you for listening. I'm kind of sorry I, I ran over, but you know, whatever. And God bless and let's keep working. <laughs>